All right, let's away. return now to Tasmania, where the community of Devonport is mourning after the tragic death of five children in that terrible jumping castle incident. Fiona Morrison is a member of the local Uniting Church and organised a candlelit vigil for the students last night. Fiona, thank you so much for being on the show. This really is an unimaginable tragedy. The pain must have been made very real last night. Absolutely, um, David. It's been a time where people who are just have no connection to the school or to any of the families have just come in crying and grieving um, over the loss of children in a community and, and something that was supposed to be a celebration to turn into a tragedy that affects a whole island community. You know, there's so many members of your church that have either worked at the school or they have kids that go there now. Uh, how are they holding up? Um, supporting each other, really. That's all they can do at the moment. It's just such a time of grief and such a time of shock um, that they are still can't believe that it's happened. Um, and, you know, from families and children who just are in such shock that they that what they've seen or what they've experienced is a nightmare um, that they never thought they would experience. Of course. And I think that you, we want you all to know that the nation is just sending out our thoughts and our prayers to your community out there. And, you know, we're hearing reports this morning of that community rallying, of people, you know, we spoke to Jackie Lambie before the senator down there. Everyone seems to know somebody from that school or the church or the community. It's so small. It's so tight. It affects everybody so deeply there. How, how tight is Absolutely. this community rallying at the moment? Um, it's rallying very closely. Um, you can see that through the GoFundMe or just people offering support and going, how can I help? What can I do? Um, they're just wanting to share and support. And, you know, even last night, people turned their Christmas lights off in respect or turned their Christmas lights on um, to offer other children some hope um, and some light at this time um, when they are, you know, grieving or, or just wondering what on earth is happening around them. Um, and, you know, in most of the world, we have six degrees of separation. In Tasmania, really, it's about three. Um, this is such a deeply commu held community that holds each other and knows each other so well from long times of experience and family connections. So it really is a big shock um, and to this community. Yeah, it really is. And to think that something like this ha has happened just before Christmas... Yes, it's really hard. It. And I think that's that's, that's the thing. And, and I think that the community rallying together, going forward on this, the GoFundMe, we're going to be speaking to the woman from that soon. Uh, I want to ask you how you're doing, because I know that, you know, sometimes we look to people who are helpers at this time. They're very important. Yeah. How are you holding up? Um, holding up OK, but it is, you know, when you're sitting with people who are crying or just wondering what to do, that that inner strength and that support that we can help each other um, is what holds you up um, and the fact that we all rally together. Um, yes. We are all thinking of you down there. Thank you so much, Fiona. You take care. Thank you very much, David. Oh, thank God for people like Fiona. What a beautiful, strong woman. Well, we're joined now by Defence Minister Peter Dutton in Brisbane. <clears throat> And Deputy Opposition Leader Richard Miles in Geelong. I'm sorry, this is, so, this is um, so difficult for everyone this morning, isn't it, Peter? It's a tragedy beyond words. It's just indescribable, Sylvia, and uh, I mean, the only comfort you can take at the moment from that uh, amazing interview just then was that, you know, there is community support and people are rallying around each other, which is important because it's obviously at the worst possible time of the year just to compound... Uh, you know, a shocking tragedy in any case. And uh, I just think those families will need every support, not just, you know, in the coming hours and days, but uh, for years to come. I mean, as a parent, you could just never, ever recover from this and the whole community will be shattered. So, uh, as you say, thank God for people uh, like Fiona and others uh, in a small knit community and they're pulling together and they must. Richard, um, the, uh, we're looking at this image here of the two police officers huddled together on the ground. You know, the way this is going to impact everyone in that community is just beyond comprehension. 
It certainly is. I completely agree with what Peter's just said, and and that photo, which I, you know, the, the first responders and and their need to look after each other, in given what they witnessed and what they had to deal with, um, you know, speaks to how desperately sad this tragedy is. And I think for the likes of Peter and I, we, we spend this time going of the year going to uh, primary schools, particularly at the, at the end of their school year. Uh, we join in in their celebrations. It's, it's a really emotional time at the, the, the end of uh, the primary school year. Grade six is graduating. Um, it's a joyous moment. Uh, the, the, these kids were going to that yesterday with, with a sense of celebration. Uh, and, and that it turns out this way is, is it's just desperately sad. Uh, Peter's right that the, the, the interview that you just played with, with Fiona speaks to a very strong community who obviously are looking after each other in this in this moment but for all of us, well everyone, you know I was going to say for all of us who are parents that I mean this is just an unspeakable tragedy oh. and uh, and, and our thoughts and, and prayers are very much with, with those families and, and with those kids who are fighting for their lives right now. Yeah, we hope there is even a, a tiny bit of strength in the, in the knowledge that the whole nation is with them this morning. We're joined now from Davenport, Devonport by Zoe Smith, who's set up a GoFundMe page to support the families who've been affected by this awful, awful tragedy. Zoe, good morning to you. Um, well done, first of all. Good on you for doing this. It's been going for under 24 hours. Tell us what the response has been to this GoFundMe page. It's just, uh, it's astronomical really, it's crazy. I think it's clocked over $300,000, which is just beyond anything we could comprehend. And really what started out as such a small amount has just shown the amount of love the community has for these people and how hurting, how much hurt they are going through. And hopefully this can just alleviate a little bit of that pain. You're 18 years old yourself uh, as a part of that community. I'm sure you know a lot of people there who've been affected. What made you want to do this? Um, I kind of saw myself as an external figure. I didn't go to this primary school and I don't have any siblings here and I thought, well, what better person to organise it than someone that isn't emotionally involved in such a personal way um, and I could support them in that way because there's not really much else you can do um, in such a community like this. So hopefully that can just help them a little bit. Well, I think that's the thing, you know, we're all at a loss to find any words that can, that, that can summarise what has happened there. And we're all at a loss to find a way to support this community as well because words don't feel like enough. So that's why what you've done is so powerful and that's why it has generated so much support. And it's not just money that's been coming into that page. The messages of support have been so moving, haven't they? Oh, I've been inundated with emails this morning. I woke up and there was probably 20 just thank you so much and I had a message from one of the families which was just so moving um, to hear from them and just hopefully this money can just go towards something to make their Christmas a little bit better after such such horrible events here. So I mean considering that you're there what is the reaction like from people that you know in the community about this tragedy? Oh, it's just seen from the flowers and the gifts that have been laid out, it's just horrible and people driving past and delivering flowers and the candles that have been lit all around is just, people are just so hurt and they don't know what to do so I think through this they were able to feel like they were connected and supporting and giving something back to the people who have obviously lost so much. The, the vigil behind you has been growing by the hour as we've been on air this morning, the outpouring of grief and support for these families is unbelievable. I mean, it, it, it's, it, we, cannot we cannot understand what everyone is experiencing right now. How do you expect the money that is raised to help the families over Christmas? I think the plan is at this stage to give it to the school community and the school committee here. Um, that way they can distribute it to the families and so that they can see fit how it's used. Um, hopefully it can go towards some other gifts for the rest of the school as well as it's such a large sum of money now. So I'm sure it'll be used to the best way um, and hopefully alleviate some of those financial burdens that the families are currently in. Well, Zoe, you are a remarkable woman to 
you know, do this altruistic move to think about others at this time in your community and to do this. You're well over 300,000 now, um, and we want to really wrap that up there. It's very easy to find. Go to GoFundMe and put in, uh, I believe it's Hillcrest uh, Primary, is that right, or Hillcrest School? Yes, yeah. Mm. Um, Zoe, thank you so we'll much for your time. Just put in Hillcrest Primary School and it should. Mm. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. And just, I mean, that just says it all. What an amazing contribution, you know, f between Zoe's contribution, we hear last night that an off-duty security guard stood by that, that vigil to protect it and to also offer hugs and condolences to community members as they arrive to lay flowers and teddy bears. They are all doing their bit to rally around one another this morning and uh, our hearts are with them as well. Stay with us. We're back right after this.